I wish I liked Love's Kitchen more than I did. I honestly found it pretty disappointing because the narrative was not interesting. Credit where credit is due. Our protagonist, Rob, played by Dougery Scott, is Scottish. And to have a protagonist in a film that is not a Scottish-based film, that has a very thick Scottish accent is very unusual. And I will say there are about 30 accents in this film. It's one of the most realistic films in terms of accents that I have ever seen. And I'm starting to realise that there's a good reason why films don't put 30 different accents into one film. Because it kind of just makes your ear jump around a lot and doesn't allow you to focus on the things that are important to the narrative. That aside, it sounded like it could have been interesting, but I feel like the execution let itself down. And they're just relying on Gordon Ramsay to promote it, to be perfectly honest. This was released in 2011, written and directed by James Hacking. And stars, as I said, Dougery Scott as our protagonist, Rob. He, at the very beginning of the film, we find out that he loses his wife. And then flash forward however many months, and he has an opportunity to buy out a um, pub. And he is encouraged to do this by his real-life TV chef friend, Gordon Ramsay. Ramsay, of course, needs no introductions. And it's all about him setting up this new business. He has a a young daughter in his life. And he also has a potential romantic interest in the form of a an American food critic, Kate, um, played by Claire Forlani. And, you know, it's, it's questioning whether or not this new avenue with his business will be successful, but also whether or not he will ever find love again after having, of course, relatively recently lost his wife. It's interesting. It's chaotic, sometimes in a good way, sometimes in a way that just makes it feel scattered. The mix of about 30 accents does make it quite hard to follow, I will be perfectly honest. And I never thought I'd say that because I'm one of those people who campaigns for more realism in films. And when you have everybody who's speaking with RP and Everybody looks like they were all raised in the same little area, even though they're all working in Manhattan and should obviously be coming from different walks of life and being hypothetical. It feels unrealistic. But this one has proved to me that actually maybe you need to find a happy medium between the two. The narrative itself wasn't as interesting as it could have been. Um, The development didn't really throw us many curveballs. I didn't really care about some of the relationship development between the characters. There were times when it worked well and I was curious to know what would happen next, but for the most part, I didn't care. To be quite blunt about it, I just didn't think there was any real emotional investment to be had in in a lot of the characters. Would I recommend it? I'm on the fence. You know, I love recommending British films because it's rare that we get to do that, but I find that quite hard to do. Interestingly, Holly Gibbs is in this. I loved Holly Gibbs and Tracy Beaker. So that, for me, was a pull factor. It was great to see her in this. But the film itself, the narrative wasn't interesting. The execution was pretty boring. I feel like they've just plunked Gordon Ramsay in this to try and sell it with his name. Doug Ray Scott gave a great performance. I definitely enjoyed the character, I felt his motivations were believable, I felt his emotions were realistic, but unfortunately that's pretty much where the positive aspects end.